Hello, welcome to Solar Life. Today we've got a very special episode because we're going to be installing some more solar panels on site. But uh, because the house is full, we're going to have to install the solar panels in the ground. So I've got a giant sauna tube that's 30 inches across. Behind that, I've got a 20 foot aluminum pole and we're going to put all our solar panels on top of that. So in order for that to all work, we have to get the solar energy from here all the way back up to the house. So I'm going to have to dig a trench from the house all the way down here and then a seven foot hole to sink that thing into. So hope you enjoy this episode. I'm pretty excited to uh, move forward with a little bit more solar energy. This is Solar Life. So when we left off, we were digging the trench from the house down to the where the pole is mounted. And um, it was a lot of fun using the excavator and getting to dig that hole by myself and you know using machinery like that it's not something I do every day but we did run into the drain from the kitchen so we had to dig that out by hand and find the ends that I tore off and clean them up and uh, fortunately my dad went to town and got all the pieces that we needed in order to repair the ABS line and we were able to put it all back together and lay the wire down and continue the rest of the day uh, without too much interruption. So as you can see, the solar panel array is finished and it's making lots of power every day. It's a 12 panel solar array with a linear actuator to allow for single axis adjustment at the touch of a button. So while I'm talking, I'm going to adjust it so you can see it moving. Uh, I designed the pole mount after a picture that I got from my solar technician showing me, uh, you know, essentially what I would get if I paid for one. And uh, I looked at it and I thought, geez, you know, there's not a lot there. I'm pretty sure I could build that myself. So that was where this all started out. The model that I was designing this after had a uh, seasonal adjustment and it used a giant uh, bar to allow you to keep the pole and the array set to different angles at different times of the year. Once I realized that it was going to be 13 feet off the ground and that I was going to have to adjust this thing in the fall and in the winter, I decided that I was going to add a linear actuator uh, or essentially a motor to lift and change the angle of the solar panels so that um, I'd be able to do this either, you know, from right next to the solar panel or ideally from the warmth of my kitchen window up in the house. So I tested the little key fob that came with the motor controller and it works from the house. It's pretty great. I can adjust this every day before I go to work, decide what angle I want to have the solar panel at. Um, I've had a lot of people ask me if this is a solar tracker. It's not a solar tracker. I thought about, you know, putting a solar tracker device on here, but essentially uh, it's automated in that I can, you know, adjust it without having to do anything, but it's up to me to set the angle. We had a good lift for the heavy aluminum pipe. My friend Andrew brought his tractor over and we lifted it up with the strap and the bucket. Once the pipe was in place, we put some anti-spin rods through some holes that we drilled in the pipe, and then we finished lowering it into the hole. We used the staging and the staging planks to strap the pole to so that it was able to remain perfectly vertical while we poured the rest of the concrete and waited for the concrete to set. All in all, the concrete pour went well. Uh, it didn't have any problems. The delivery driver showed up on time and I ordered just enough concrete to fill the hole and there was just a tiny bit left over that we poured in next to the hole to uh, fill in the space and the gap next to the form tube. Once the concrete was set, I was able to put the pole mount on top of the pole. I chose to use aluminum for the pole because it won't rust, it was much lighter and it was only a little bit more expensive than steel because I couldn't get a pipe that was bigger than the six inch aluminum pipe. I chose to make the pole mount from a six inch steel pipe that they make uh, for well casing, so a schedule 40 pipe. 
So the, the pipe that I used for the pole mount is essentially, it's, it's made out of a sheet and it's rolled and it's forged together and welded. So I was pretty sure that it would spring open when I cut it. So I used a four inch angle grinder with a cutoff disc. And as I was cutting it, it started to open up. Now, it wasn't enough of an opening that it was going to slide over top of the six inch pole mount. So I had to use a scissor jack that I had for uh, lifting, you know, motorhomes and stuff like that to pry open the pipe. And then I was able to put some spacers in there and weld it all together. Okay, I used quarter inch plate steel for the rest of the parts of the pole mount. The plates that I made were all deliberately oversized so that I wouldn't have to worry about stress fractures and bending. The mount is essentially a large hinge that carries the weight of the panels but allows the array to be tipped for optimum sun angle. I was basing my design on a system that my solar consultant sent me, um, but I didn't really like it very much. It didn't look very strong, so I decided to beef up the rail system and the way in which the panels are supported so that it'd be able to handle uh, more wind and possibly a little bit of snow load. The design for the solar array had a few key considerations. It needed to be able to tip forward like this into a near vertical orientation for winter and for snowy conditions. It needed to be able to tip backwards so that it went into a horizontal or near flat position for summertime angles and for extreme wind conditions you can lay it out flat and it won't work uh, as much like a kite like it usually does so as you can see i built the rail system to hold 12 panels because the rails are long enough to hold four panels wide and i didn't want to cut them unless i absolutely had to I made it this way and we put all the panels on it, but I knew that if it didn't support the panels well, uh, that I could cut the ends of the rails off and that we could put it up with nine panels. But as you can see, it's made with 12 panels and it's flat and straight and strong. Getting the pole mount up on top of the pole was probably the heaviest thing that I had to do. Uh, I carried it up on top of the staging, up a ladder in a, in a backpack. And once I got the pole mount on top of the pole, I used the pole mount and the bolt that goes through the pole mount to lift the giant monorail that holds all the other rails that holds all the solar panels. This thing was heavy, awkward, but the drill winch that I borrowed from a friend of mine made it easy enough that I could do it by myself. The main rail uh, that holds all the solar panels is made from four inch square tube that I decided to put bearings into after the initial design was welded. So I had to cut the tube open, put them inside and weld the tube back together. I would definitely do this differently if I had to do it all over again, but it worked quite well. And now the weight is supported by bearings and this thing tilts like a dream. The bearings are greasable from underneath through two little holes that I made to service them. Once I got the main rail up onto the staging, I could cut the pole down to size and install the pole mount for the last time. The main rail went on without any problems and the bolt slipped through the bearings and held the rail without any gaps or looseness in the hardware. At this point, I was elated that I hadn't screwed up anything to the point that I was going to have to redo it. Once the main rail was up onto the pole mount, I could add the aluminum rails that I pre-assembled on the ground so that I wouldn't have to drill while I was up on the scaffolding platform. With all the rails bolted on, it was possible to install the solar panels. My dad came over and helped me with the panels and we installed two thirds of the panels in a couple of hours. So after my dad and I put the first eight panels up, the next day I slid the last four panels up a ladder onto the staging and put them up by myself. I used a couple of C-clamps to clamp onto the edge of the aluminum uh, rail that goes around the solar panels, and then I slid them up the ladder until I was able to get a hold of them and put them up by hand. This was a little bit scary. I was worried that I might drop one, but they went up just fine and I didn't have any problems. 
Bolting the last panel on is always the hardest, but my last panel is actually the 50 watt panel that lives on the top of the array that charges up the battery, that runs the motor, that moves the solar array up and down. The system that I designed to tilt the panels up and down is essentially like its own little off-grid system. It has a solar panel and a charge controller that charges a battery. That battery is then used to run the motor actuator, which turns the motor to run one way or the other. So the great thing about this little motor controller is that it had two ports and it was built to run two different actuators at the same time. So I only needed one port to run the linear actuator on my system and so that left the other port open and uh, gave me two wires that were going to work the same way as the linear actuator. So when I was designing this and talking with some friends about how to do it, they said, well, why don't you put some lights on your motor so that you can tell which way it's going? And so what I decided to do is that I wired up two LED lights to the other port on the linear actuator motor controller so that when the motor is going up, one light shines, and when the motor is going down, the other light shines. So essentially, I can always tell which way it's going, and I can tell when the motor is stopped because the lights go out. This works so well that I can adjust the array at night, and this will be great in the wintertime when I have to get up in the dark and go to work. I can decide what angle I want to have the array at, and I can set it in the dark, and then I can go to work. The first linear actuator that I bought was built well enough to do the job of lifting the array, but I was worried that it didn't have enough static load strength in order to support the array during a high wind situation. So I purchased a large four foot model that's more robust and more powerful. I'll use the smaller actuator on a smaller project in the future, I'm sure. This solar array has 12 310 watt panels for a total of 3,700 watts potential. This is only six panels less than all the panels that are on the house, and it produces more power every day than all the panels on the house. Right now, the sun has a very high angle uh, during the summer, and the panels on the house don't work nearly as good as they do in the wintertime. The new array allows us to run the house and charge the batteries on a cloudy day, and this should significantly reduce our dependence on our propane generator in the wintertime. It should allow us to go through longer dark days, and it should keep us from having to run the generator nearly as often. The extra 3700 watts charges up the batteries sooner every single day, and for the most part the two different arrays just work to float the batteries throughout the rest of the day. So I'm quite uh, excited that we're going to be able to charge the house or at least keep the house uh, with enough power so that we can get through even a really stormy cloudy day. So this all started with trying to save some money by making my own pole mount instead of buying one. Because I have access to the space and the equipment and the materials, I thought it was worth it to try to see if I could build something cheaper and maybe even a little better than a professional mount system. The goal was to come out with less than the cost of a factory model, and that was about $1,500. So all told, the metal and the materials that I put into this solar mount came up to around $600 for all the steel and the bolts and the hardware and the, even the extra bearings. Um, the additional money in order to be able to tip it is where all the extra savings went. So it cost almost a thousand dollars for the battery and the charge controller, the linear actuator, the motor to run it all. So all in all I came in at about the same price as a static seasonally adjustable mount, but this mount can be adjusted at the touch of a button. So the rails that held the solar panels, those were quite expensive. They cost around $600. The clamps that hold the solar panels to those rails were about $200. The pole that everything sits on cost $400. The concrete that the pole is in costs another $400. The mini excavator cost around $300. All in all, it cost around $4,000 for the pole, the mount, the groundwork, cost around another $4,000 for the solar panels, 
half of which I paid for out of the last energy rebate. And the wiring, the breakers, and the physical hookup of the electricity to the existing system costs an additional $1,500. The entire system cost around roughly $10,000 all said and done, which if you do the math is around two and a half cents per watt. And that's a savings from four and a half cents a watt that it cost us to go off grid because this system didn't require any extra batteries. Uh, my other system took batteries, an inverter, a generator, all kinds of extra things. So this was significantly cheaper to add on to my system. I really enjoyed the process of making this pole mount. I saved some money on the mount system, but I spent it in automation. The rest of the savings came from doing all of the groundwork and the panel installation ourselves. The solar technician only had to wire the panels and hook the charge controller to the batteries, which took about a day. I spent months doing this slowly on my own. I saved probably three or $4,000 and learned how to create some pretty cool stuff. I hope that you found this helpful and that you might consider going solar in the future. Thanks for watching this and subscribe if uh, you wanna see what we're up to in uh, the coming months. This is Drew and uh, thanks for watching Solar Life.